loves him because he first loved me and he purchased and he purchased my salvation on Calvary Calvary's tree you love the Lord won't you give him a big old hand clap of praise Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. God's good to us, isn't he? Real quick, let's grab our Bibles and go ahead and turn to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. These brothers can play just another minute. Amen. We're just glad to see all of you out. Glad to see some spring colors. Amen. Everybody got so dreary with the rain and snow and ice. And starting to see some spring colors come out, so pretty. And I love the Lord for his mighty, mighty working power, amen. Twelfth chapter of the book of Hebrews. The Bible reads like this, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. He said, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now let, let's, let's look at that again now. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, everybody say lay aside, every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. He said, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He says, looking unto Jesus. How many knows we need to look unto Jesus? The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And he goes on, Paul goes on, and I'm going to read it, but he says, for consider him that endureth such things. Consider him. Let's bow our heads and go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for the moving of your spirit. We thank you for what we feel in this house. We thank you for everyone that you've sent to be with us. God, we ask that you just forgive us this morning of anything that may hinder us. Forgive us of our sins, of our trespasses. Lord, that we can stand boldly before you and, and be honored by you, God. We ask you in the name of Jesus to just come and be in our midst and speak to our hearts and our minds. Lord, and edify us this very minute. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the church said amen. Man, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. <coughs> amen and amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. amen, if you got one. Praise the Lord. No, I'll pass on that one. I wanted spring colors, but I didn't want a pink handkerchief. Amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? I tell you, it's hard to, it, it, you know, it used to be hard to be humble, but you hang around the group I hang around with, and they humble you real quick, amen? I mean, you love the Lord, amen, amen. God is good to us, and um, I don't, I've, um, me and my family, we're, we're running on just a couple hours of sleep, we, the last couple of days, it's been pretty busy, but you know, the Lord knows exactly what we need when we need it, I mean, would agree. Amen. And so um, this morning we was actually in Dublin. We left from Dublin and came straight here and woke up about 7.45 and I says, oh, Lord, have we missed it? And uh, my clock, uh, my phone, I forgot, was on vibrate, so I didn't hear nothing go off. And, and uh, But we got here in, in time. We getting, didn't get to meet the Sunday school, but um, I come in on the tail end. It sounded like it was going really well. So I'm sure that the Lord is here. How many degrees he's here? Amen, because you and I are here, amen. But I want to talk to you this morning with a, um, just, just a thought I've got, and I, I hope I can bring it to light. And uh, where well, we all can see it. Now, I've got something I'm going to try with you here in a little while, and uh, just feel free to cooperate. Have the spirit of cooperation, amen. 
and uh, because I, I believe you'll, you'll benefit from it. How many wants to benefit from the Lord? Yes. How many believes you should? Yes. Amen, I sure do. All right, Paul's speaking here, at least that's who I believe wrote the book of Hebrews, and, and um, he says now, he's talking to some people that's already received the Lord, because you notice he's talking about run the race to win. So he's, he's encouraging them to move forward. All right, so he's talking to fellow believers, probably some that he's converted himself maybe. And he says, now look, he says, I want you to understand something. He says, we're, we're encompassed about, he says, with so great a cloud of witnesses. What he says is, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Yes. Now, the cloud you see when you walk out, if there is any, I hope there's not. But if there is some clouds when we walk out, he ain't talking about that kind of cloud. He's talking about a rain cloud. That ain't, that ain't no witness to nothing. Are you with me? But he says, witness says. All right, so now we, we could get into something. We have to go way off to get into that. But nonetheless, he's talking about fellow believers that's gone, passed on uh, by the way of the grave or, or translation or whatever might have happened. He's talking about fellow believers that's, that's passed on in the name of the Lord. He says, now, we're encompassed about. So you're surrounded by this cloud of witnesses. Now, he ain't talking to zombies. He's talking about real live people. And he says, Brother Don O'Hearn, for instance, if Paul was here, he'd say, Brother Don, you're surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses. You said, Brother Don would be scratching and say, well, how's that possible? And it, it just is. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. We could get into that, but that ain't my subject today. He says, with so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us. Now, what he's saying, he says, you could take on a burden or a load, uh, whatever it may be, we're gonna get into that in a minute. And he says, and this can beset you. Or he wouldn't have said, lay it off. Amen. He says, which does so easily, it can easily trip you up and beset you if you don't lay it aside. Now, he gave us the key, he said, lay it aside. Right. You notice the song we sing, uh, leave it to, take it to the well, and leave it there, you know. He says, uh, you spent your whole life chasing what's missing. Uh -huh. But that emptiness inside, he said, ain't gonna listen. He said, because you're trying to satisfy it with something that cannot quench the thirst. Are you with me today, ladies and gentlemen? And this morning, I wanna talk about your resurrection. Now, all over this morning, all over America, the Christian world, for instance, they're talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Now, and I know that's important, ladies and gentlemen. How many believes he resurrected? I mean, it's very important, and I believe that it's essential. But I wonder if I would have been put in his shoes, and I would have had to die for you. Uh -huh. And uh, and after over two thousand years, every Easter service they talk about me resurrecting, talking about Jesus, me resurrecting, me resurrecting. But they never resurrect. I would be aggravated. Somebody say Amen. I would be perturbed a little. I said, Man, these boys ain't gonna never get it, are they? They keep telling the same story with no effects. Are you with me today and so it's not really real unless it happens to you somebody say amen praise the Lord so he says look he says let's lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us he said let us run with patience the race that is set before us now, I, I, I got a little demonstration here I need to help, help myself with if I can my God how mercy hold the mic my God, I won't be able to get through this, boys. I have to unload some of my weight for this is over with. <laughs> Praise God, glory to God. If my britches fall off, saints, I'm sorry. You may have to, brother. All right, so he says, now lay aside every weight and sin which does so easy. The first time, now I'll be honest with you, uh, y'all remember in the news maybe a year ago, uh, this, this man at, at a big college uh, got uh, convicted for molesting all those boys in that football camp or whatever it was. I, I forget now the story. But I remember uh, seeing this. I was in a restaurant and they had it on the news and this story was out, of course. And uh, I feel like a pack mule. <laughs> hey, man, I'll go to bed in a minute. And so... Um, but I remember seeing this man come getting out of his car and walking uh, into the courtroom, Uncle Bob. 
And I, and he was an elderly man, you know, he'd, I think this was over the course of 30 years or something. I mean, this, this guy had been doing this a long time. So he was an older man when he finally, they finally started uh, coming out and testifying against him. And, and I remember when he got out of his, his car and he began to walk uh, toward the courthouse, I noticed that he was just sort of humped back like this, slumped over. And he was a tall old boy but he was sort of humped back a little and walking sort of like this. And as soon as I saw that, this scripture hit my mind. And I said, oh man, look at there. He says, every weight and sin which doth so easily beset you. I thought about that, I said, my, 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 I wonder what, how this all could go. And then I began to consider in my own life Things that had my shoulders slumped. How many has had your shoulders slumped? Yeah. This bag would get them slumped, amen. I told them a few things and they put the whole house. Amen. Somebody say amen, glory to God. Amen. And so, amen, man. Uh, with that being said, I, I begin to think about this and I said, I wonder, I wonder what is in Jonathan McKinney's life on, that is weighing him down. Now, technically, I only weigh about 150 pounds naturally. And uh, I'm as skinny as a rail. Somebody say glory to God. And, uh, it, it, you know, so I wouldn't weigh in at all. I'd really have to pack some stuff in to weigh anything. A good wind blows me away. And so, uh, but you know, but spiritually, how much do I weigh? Yes. We get into some. We talking about your resurrection now, and uh, now Paul said, "Look, he says this weight." Now notice the text here. He's talking about a race. Right. Now before I put this weight on, I was pretty light on my feet, but since I got this weight on, I ain't near as light in my feet. Yeah. And uh, Uncle Bob, he'd probably outrun me anyways. But uh, with this weight on, he's, he's guaranteed he's going to outrun me. But now, if I could get this weight off my back. It would, it would make my feet feel so much lighter and I, my, I would be so much more athletical and, yeah. and I would be maneuverable. Are you hearing me today? And, and I would have so much more flexibility if I was to remove this weight. Now, we're gonna get to what the weight is in just a minute. And so, but, but none to say, I, I'm 150 pounds and I've entered a race. But as soon as I get in this race and I begin to run this race that I may obtain the goal, the prize, then, and then the, what happens? My consciousness wakes up and conviction hits and I begin to remember my past. I begin to remember what I did last night. I begin to remember what I did a week ago and it begins to burden me way down on my shoulders and it makes this race so much more harder. Somebody say amen. Now, I want to ask you something. Did the Lord come to relieve this weight? You know what the Bible says? He says, look, my burden is what? Light. light. This ain't light, so this ain't his burden. Amen? This come from the Abernathy home. Somebody say glory. <laughs> he brought all his baggage to me. Amen? And so, think about it. So he said, my burden is light. All right, so now, I know if I'm getting heavy in the shoulders, it ain't God. Right. Are you with me today? I'm getting somewhere with this now. Now, uh, now I know if I'm carrying something around that, that it's burdening me, it's stressing me, right. it's aggravating my spirit, it's vexing me, it, it's causing me anything but peace. Right. It ain't God. Are you with me today? You mean to tell my job ain't God? If it's doing all that, it ain't God. Bro, you tell me to quit and get on welfare? No. Because somebody with a job's got to support you. Are you with me today? Uh, come on now, talk to me, saints. <laughs> we don't need no more leeches. Somebody say glory to God. Now, if you need it, get it. Bless God. That's what it's there for. But if you don't need it and you got two legs, and how did I get into all this? And two hands, you need to be working, Jack. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. So I had to play politician every service, seems like. And so here we are, and this weight, he said, it easily besets you. All right, so now, if you got something in your life, that is a distraction. Right, right. It can create a weight, it will create a sin, and it will, it will terminate you from the race. Right. Now look, this is the text. Uh, if you was to study this 12th chapter out, you would see that Apostle Paul is talking about, for instance, back in that day, they had what we call today theaters. 
All right. So what they did is they this theater, just like the big dome in Atlanta, uh, uh, in Athens over there, the Georgia dome. Well, it was it was like that, big old high seats, and it looked deep, but it was just high. Right. And what they would do is they would get in there, down in that bottom, yeah. and uh, they would uh, put on like a carnival type deals. Right. Uh, they would also kill Christians. Sure. All right. That's. That's your entertainment. I'm sorry to tell you this, but your entertainment came. Oh, help us, Lord. Yeah, that's right. It yeah. originated from that. Yeah. So they took the killing Christians, Olympics even, uh, as what Olympics bred from. Right. If you study that out, you will find the same spirit that uh, gets you to root for the Falcons or the Georgia Bulldogs is the very, I'm gonna make somebody mad, same spirit that rooted for them to kill the Christians. Uh oh, somebody, you wanna preach now? It is. Uh, uh, it is exactly right, and you study it out, you'll find it to be true. And so, what were they doing? They set up in that theater, and they're, yeah, cut his head off. I see him the other day give somebody a bag of groceries on Sunday. And, and so, you know, that's how it was, where they were just rooting it off. Well, Paul painted that picture, and he says, now, you're surrounded about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You're not surrounded by people saying, kill him, give us Barabbas. But rather, you're surrounded by witnesses of precious like faith saying, look, you can take that weight off. You can get out of sin. And you can, you will. You got to win this race that God has set before you. Are you with me today? So you got these witnesses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and David even. We're gonna talk about David in a minute. And we got David even, and Elijah, and Enoch, and they're surrounding us, Uncle Bob, in our day-to-day -day life. And they say, you can do it. And you said, I don't think I can. You like the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Are <laughs> you with me He's going down, I know I could, I know I could. Are you with me So, but, but see there, you gotta have some support. How many need support? Yes. Well, like God, I do this morning. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> amen, I'm coughing a little, so just hold on. But we're getting somewhere. So I'm talking about your resurrection now. All right, now watch this. So Paul's saying, look, he says, when you don't think you got a support group, you don't have to go to AA meeting. Come on. There's some spiritual beings surrounded about you. Right. And they're promoting you. Yes. Right. They're supporting. You got a support group. Come on. All right. So when you feel yourself getting weighed down with the burdens of this world, he says, then look, look up. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For your redemption, it draweth now. Are you with me today, saints of God? I need you to open these things here for me, brother. I'm gonna need those things in my bobbers here in a minute. And uh, so let's look at this for a minute. Now, I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna have to lay my weight down a minute where I can get flexible. So let's look at it. He says, now, look unto Jesus. He says, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Now, a newsflash, you ain't trying to finish your faith. You're just trying to stay in the race who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Now let's watch this case of God. He didn't say it was a labor of love. He said he endured it. Are you with me today? I'm getting somewhere with this the whole time. So now he endured the cross. Don't you think this thing got heavy? Don't you think it almost was sin to him? For the Bible says he became sin. What the Bible says. Don't you think, ladies and gentlemen, that that, that was a this was not just a, a cakewalk. This wasn't something you just take lightly. Oh, he hung on the cross for us. He bled for us. Saints of God, it's a beautiful day, ain't it? Praise God, we can get saved now. No, he endured this thing. He, he didn't enjoy it, not one bit. He cried because of it. He wept because of it. His parents wept because of it. His siblings, if you will, cried and wept and pleaded with God. His disciples cried and pleaded with God. But he had a weight, ladies and gentlemen, that he could not keep on him to the grave, but he had to hang it on the cross. Are you with me, saints of God? Talk about your resurrection now. And so, but there's things, ladies and gentlemen, that can beset us, get us off course. We're gonna talk about this. I wanna bring up David for a minute. You know, have you ever wondered what happened to Jesse after David became king? You ever thought about that? You don't hear him mentioned, do you? You don't hear him mentioned before he was called to be king either, do you? 
He was called and said, he's the daddy of David. That's all. I want you to split these in pairs. Give me about three papers each and just split them in pairs if you would. Gotta keep them busy, keep them awake. I'm gonna give all y'all a job in a minute, praise God. Right, have you considered Jesse for a minute? Let's talk about David now. How many, know, how, many, how many knows what he was? Was he the king? Little Joe, was he the king? David, king of Israel? All right, so he was a king. He was a bad machine too, Jack. He could fight. All right, now you think about this man, but I want to talk about him for a minute. Now, Joe, little Joe, now you was, you was your daddy's only boy, right? Is that right? So you know you was the apple of his eye. You know that. I mean, he didn't give him his name. All right, so he loved him, uh, you know, unconditionally. All right, now, now don't you think about it. Now, you know your daddy loved you, right? I mean, no doubt about that. Everybody in here would agree. All right, now, David had competition. He had a lot more boys, brothers, that his daddy, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'll say he gloated on. He, he, he really took up more time with them. Come on. And I'm gonna show you how, why I think this. So you just hold tight. You ain't going nowhere, right? All right, and so hey, here he is. He's in this family. How many boys were they? Six, seven, I forget. But nonetheless, there was, a, there was a bunch of them. They're sort of like your daddy's family. Bunch of children. Amen. And so, listen to this. There was a prophecy. Samuel was sent to anoint a king. Now the Lord said, go to the house of Jesse. Get me a king. He said, there's a king there. I've already, I've already, I've already arranged it. All right. Now watch this closer now. I'm getting to a point here. You'll find, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesse, uh, that Samuel, goes to the house of Jesse, and Jesse brings all of his boys out. Right. Yeah. Except one. Yeah. And you'll find that they're all lined up in their armor, looking cool. You know, he's got some athletes in there. He's got some six, six boys that can dunk the, the basketball goal. Come on, saints. He's got a linebacker in the group. That's how we are today. They know how we rate our children on how accomplished we think they can be. Somebody say glory. I'm gonna preach it, no matter what. I'm gonna preach it. All right, and so, you know, that's how we rate them. He's a good fisherman. That boy there can fish. He's an outdoorsman. I love him. That boy, he's more like me. He's an outdoorsman. And the other one, oh, he's just a mama's boy, but he's probably one with the meek spirit that's actually gonna go somewhere in God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And, and you know, that's the way we rate things. Somebody say amen. And, and that's the way we rate things. And so Jesse was human too, and he rated things the same way. He had some boys that could be on the front lines and didn't fear nobody but Goliath. And, and he, had some, he had some hammer knockers in the much. Somebody say amen. But you know what? Samuel gets there and he goes to each and every one of them and guess what? He don't see a king in none of them. David is still working for his daddy and for his brother sounds like. All right, now watch this. So Samuel looks at them all. God must have missed it. And he's thinking, he goes to Jesse. Jesse, is this all your boys? What's Jesse say? He said, well, I got another one. He's a shepherd boy. He said, he's out there tending sheep. That's what shepherd boy. Generals go to war. Right. They join the Navy and the Marines. But shepherd boys, they tend to tend sheep. Right. He's out there tending sheep. Samuel's thinking to himself, now I'm paraphrasing here. They know Bible for this. But Samuel's paraphrasing and thinking to himself, I wonder why he didn't call David. I told him all his boys. Yeah. You ever thought about that? So what does he do? Uh, Jesse says, sins for David. Now listen to what Samuel, Samuel's already, I guarantee he's done read this man's mail. You know what he says? He says, we will not sit until he gets here. You know, you know, what, that, you know what that reads to me? He was mad. He was a little bit agitated. Why didn't you call the boy to begin with? Now watch this close. The Bible says that David, they bring him out, tending sheep. As soon as he sees him, the Bible says the Spirit of God come upon him, and he said, this is the king of all of Israel. Oh, the little shepherd boy. The Bible says he poured that oil on him and anointed him, and the Bible says the Spirit never departed from him. Never. A shepherd boy, it's a king. 
wasn't raised for, wasn't groomed for, wasn't ready for. He didn't even have a good daddy. Somebody say amen. But yet it did not matter the conditions or the circumstances or the weight that would try to beset him. Ladies and gentlemen, he was still king of all of Israel and the apple of God's eye. Boy, I like the love story of God. Amen. All us little weenie boys, Lord likes us too. Amen. Think about it. The anointing would come on him and he'd rip a lion in half. Right. The anointing would come on him, he'd take down a bear. Right. The anointing would come on him, he'd break out his heart and sing to the sheep. The anointing would come on him, he'd whistle Dixie walking down the road. The anointing would come on him, he'd stand in front of a Goliath whom the generals were scared to death of and say, who is this ugly, beasty Philistine? He said, he's trying to defy the armies of the living God. You can't do this as long as I'm in the house. Don't you know I'm the king? Yeah. Hey Amen, think about it, saints. But this bread problems, how many's ever been messed up by your family? Oh, yeah. Oops, somebody say amen. Amen. How many's had a bad daddy, a bad mama? Maybe two of them. <laughs> so glory to God. It's more I'd have one, but when you get to have three and four, it gets bad, don't it? So that's double trouble. And so he got this. Here you got David. Don't you ever think for a woman, just because he's king of Israel, this man don't have emotions, this man don't have trust issues, this man don't have abandonment issues, this man don't have issues. Ladies and gentlemen, you say, brother, you're just reading a lot into this. You need to read more into it. Somebody say glory. It ain't real to you. Somebody say amen. All right, so anyways, here he is. He's king of Israel. Now, Saul is still the king, technically. There's a technical difficulty, and the Lord has to remove the technical difficulty, so it takes a little while. But he's king in God's eyes. Ain't that right? Saul, the Bible man, when Saul messed up over there and didn't kill all them people like the Lord told him to, the Lord really departed from Saul. But the Lord got pretty ill with him. All right, so David's king, Brother Beretta, and David's operating spiritually as the king. Wherever he goes, thousands fall. Wherever he goes, he's mature, 10,000s fall. We'll find eventually he becomes king of Israel. We'll find he begins to have children. And we'll find that he seems to run the same father pattern as his daddy. And what do you mean, Brother McKinney? Now, I want to show you something right quick. David, I, I looked this up, and I'm going to read them to you. I didn't want to try to get them all out, so I, I, I just got them right here where they'd be sort of quick to get a hold of. But I want to show you something about David, ladies and gentlemen, that maybe, just maybe, you ain't never thought about or haven't seen. And I'm getting to a point here. They're going to give me a few minutes, right? Here's David speaking in Psalms. He says, Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Psalms 4 or 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Psalms 5 11. But let all those that give their trust in thee rejoice. Psalm 7 1. O Lord my God in thee do I put my trust. Save me from them. 9 and 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Psalms 11, 1. In the Lord put I in my trust. Psalms 13. But I have trusted in the mercy. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. 17. Them which put their trust in thee. Listen to this. 18 and 2. Whom I will trust. My buckler. He says, my horn, my salvation. The word of the Lord is tried. Trust, 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 trust. Right. Come on, Are you hearing me today? You go type in trust in your Bible and see what, who's got the most of them. That's, that's plenty, brother, thank you. David, why? Yeah. Could you imagine this? Could you imagine him coming up there and seeing that they've already been through hours of examination and he wasn't even considered in his father's lineup? Oh, think about it. I want you to watch this real close now. Now, David was out free and clear he was out having a good time doing what daddy said. How many does what daddy says? Even when you don't think it's right, you do what daddy says, amen? And so, but think about it. Daddy's up there and he's uh, talking to his, hold that for me. He's talking to Samuel, the prophet of that day. Listen, when a prophet comes to see you, it's important. You would think when a prophet comes to see you, you want the whole family home. 
Somebody say amen. You think when the prophet comes to you, now this man is the one that, that told Saul, look here, God hath departed from you. He looked the king in the eye and said, God hath departed from you. He took his sword and cut off Agog's head. He said, God hath departed from thee, so I won't be represented. This same king comes to Jesse's house and Jesse don't have enough stock in David to pick, call David on the phone, say, David, come on, the king's on his way. And you can guarantee when David come back and saw that, it vindicated already in his mind what kind of daddy Jesse was. And what did he do? This weight crept on him. We'll find as David's talking about trust, in Psalms, we'll find that several of these instances, when he's talking about, Lord, only you do I put my trust. Deliver me from these. Some of these, these that he was talking about was his own children. Study the scripture. We find in one time where his son was trying his best to kill his own daddy, the king of Israel. <laughs> and could have raised an army to do it. Why? He was, the, he was the son of David. He had clout. He had credibility. He had power. He had valor. This is a king's son we're talking about. Not a two-bit preacher's son so much. Somebody say, hey, it's different when you're a king, bless God. And, and he was a king's son. And so here's David and he's scared to death because running for his life basically. Actually runs for his life for, for a time. I'm his own son. But listen to this. There's a reason. We talk about we talk about a trust issue. David's daughter gets raped by her own brother, David's son. Now, how in the world he, he said he fell in love with her? Lying devil. Somebody say, "Amen." All right, so say he fell in love. With her. He rapes his own daughter, David's children. This is in the Bible, it ain't no legend, it's really there. The Bible says Absalom gets mad when the daughter, his sister, finally tells. Absalom gets even more angry by the year when his daddy won't do nothing about it. His dad just leaves it alone. He don't console the daughter you realize what she had to do after this? When she walked out of the house before she was taken advantage of, she walked out as a potential queen maybe. She walked in a virtuous garment. Oh, we talking about weight now. Bless God. She walked out in a virtuous garment, a garment that said virginity. A garment that said wife material in that day. I'm, not, I'm looking for the word. I can't find it. Don't take offense to nothing I'm saying. But, but a garment that spoke righteousness. She was a, a potential queen, if you will. All right? That virtue now is gone. So now when she leaves the house, even though she's raped, nobody should know about it. She has to dress how she feels. Oh, my, my, my. What's happened, brother? Well, she got raped by her brother. Now, you tell me how you'd feel. She dresses for that. So the, the head garment is now another color. The garment over her shoulders is now another color. Where she once walked with her shoulders square. Not arrogant, but proud. Righteous. There's such thing as righteous in the nation. You know, righteousness bring, brings a glow about it. She once walked out of the house like that and she was esteemed by men all over, not the county, but the world. She could have been chosen from some other nation around the world to be their queen. She could have been chosen from some other tribe maybe to be their queen or the governor's wife, however you want to consider it, but not anymore. She's tainted by her own brother. So she dresses in this wise. All right, now, can you see the weight? Bitterness. You hear me today? Trust issues. 
When your own brother takes advantage of you, who can you trust? When you're not, somebody say amen. When you can't feel comfortable in your own house, her daddy ain't coming over and say, honey, we got laws for junk like this. And this devil, I don't care if he is my son, he'll pay. Daddy don't come over. He don't send her roses. He don't send her a care package. He don't even send a dove with a message. Nothing. Brother Michael, you imagine what this done to this little girl? All right, what happens next? Absalom watches this. Not just for a day or two days. Now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, God help me, Lord. I stand with Absalom in this. On, on this part. Absalom finally murders him. Kills him. Has him killed. As I said, that's a hard call. Somebody say amen. You say, oh, I wouldn't have done that. I'd have just called the law. Yeah, that's why most of you in the problems you're in today because you involve the law and family affairs. Somebody say amen. If you had never called them devil, what makes you think they got better judgment than you over your own house? Oh, well. Well, brother, that's what we pay them for. No, I don't think so, Jack. No, nope. listen to what I'm saying. I better get off that again. Poor politics, ain't it? I just think it's crazy. Amen. So here they are. He takes it in his own hands, Brother Beretta, and he has this poor kill, kills his, his brother and his flesh and blood. But his flesh and blood brother had violated a family code. There's morals in tax, saints. There's ethics in he violated this code, saints. And, and his brother was angry. Now, I want you to watch this. Code. Not just at his brother, but at his cotton-picking daddy. That's right. mm -hmm. King of all of Israel. All he would have to do was speak. At least daddy could have had him isolated to another country where my sister didn't have to look at his face every day. Somebody say amen. So at least, at least he could have sent him to, a, to another state, another county, something. If he didn't want to kill him and take his blood or put him in prison indefinitely, he at least could have sent him out of his sight where my sister wouldn't have to suffer the shame day in and day out, day in and day out. And the weight's getting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. Not just on the daughter. We don't mention her much more. The Bible don't really bear a lot of pressure on that. But the Bible does mention Absalom through Revelation because we find that Absalom eventually takes this weight that will beset him and he begins to what? Chase the anointed of God. Now watch closer. Now this is the precious part. I want you to pay close attention to this. Absalom, by every right, ladies and gentlemen, could have could have really been angry with his daddy. I mean, ain't no doubt about that, Jack. He, he should have been angry. Somebody should have been angry about what happened. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, this weight that crept upon his back and began to burden him down, it never left him room to chase the anointed of God. Not to speak one word against him, not to think one word again. You say, yeah, but look at what he did. Ladies and no matter what you do, if you're the anointing of God, God will take care of you in due time. God took care of David. He didn't leave it for me to do or for you to do. God takes care of his own. It was one thing to hold a man accountable for his actions, but it's another thing to plot and manipulate and try to kill the anointed of God. No, this way can beset you if you let it. This way can cause you to lose your inheritance. This way can cause you sin. Amen. Are you with me today, ladies and gentlemen? You didn't see that coming, did you? Ladies and gentlemen, what are you trying to say about me? I'm trying to say, I know what this will do. Come on. Come on. Absalom, yes, he was the son of the great king, but he had to end his life as well. This bitterness and hate, angry, angerness and strife and it will destroy us. It will kill you. <coughs> Show of hands right quick. How many, now I want you to be honest now. Lord knows if you're honest or not. How many of you deals with any of the issues so far that I've spoke about? Just show you three your hand up. All right. All right, that's good. That's what we're gonna do. Real quietly, I want you to take these papers, pen, 
to each individual thing and let them slide them down to everybody. Everybody has these issues. Why don't you write it on this paper? We're going to do something. Lord laid this on my heart, so don't take it lightly. Why don't you write these things down? Now watch this. David has these issues. Why? Because he was abandoned, number one. He didn't have no daddy at all. After he leaves Jesse's house with the king, you don't hear of Jesse again. His death ain't in the Bible. You know why? Nobody cared. You know why nobody cared? Because he didn't care. I ain't saying he was an evil man. I ain't saying nothing like that. I'm just saying he had an issue. Jesse's father, if we had record of him, probably was the same way as Jesse. If you a bad daddy, won't you look back and see why? You can change it. You don't have to live that way. If you're a bad mama, look back and see why. Are you with me today, saints? I'm talking about something. We'll get real in just a second. Amen. But this weight, it can be set you. It can throw you off course. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you should have a weight. That proves one thing. You're human. Jesus had a weight. He endured this cross. I'm not talking about the weight of this lumber. I'm talking about the burden of the cause. He endured this. But ladies and gentlemen, the great thing about this whole topic this morning is that this man endured this great cross. And then Paul says, for consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Now, that's a sticky note. Before you write on it, that's a sticky note. If you don't want people to see what it is that you want to write on there, write on the opposite side. And when it sticks, the writing will be on the sticky side that nobody will see because we're going to do something with those sticky notes and you're going to see God move. How many believe the Lord moves? Amen. amen. I got me a couple. I'm going to put on there too, Jack. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I'm getting rid of some of this weight. This stuff's heavy. It's heavy, ain't it? You know, ladies and gentlemen, weight will cause you to be unfruitful. I want you to watch something now. Oh, God, I may get in trouble on this, but I got I to gotta preach something. You get, 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 I got a few more minutes if you don't mind. I'm so sorry, but it's just taking a little while. But I want you to think about this. Do you realize that, that men folk that are, that are extremely overweight, that being overweight can cause them to be sterile? I'm getting to something. Hold tight. I'm sorry, but I got to talk about it. That extra weight, the body, wasn't designed for it. You know, we know it causes diabetes. We know it causes problems in the bones. We know it causes all manner of things. But you know, this weight that we can put on ourselves spiritually will cause us not to be able to plant a seed in someone else's life. I'm talking about sterile now. What happens? You know, you're so mad at your daddy. You're so mad at your mama. You're so mad at your siblings that you can't reach your neighbor because of the animosity and the anger and the trust issues and the superstition. David was one of the most superstitious people I ever heard of in my life. Everybody was out to get him. Paranoid. I wonder why. We don't know enough about his childhood to really know exactly what this boy suffered. How many days and nights did his daddy tell him to stay out there in the, in the field by himself? How young was he when he was out there by himself? You know, what about family dinners and get-togethers? Was he, was he allowed to come on? He's a shepherd boy. He's tending sheep. That's what they do. And this weight was there. Number eight, this weight don't leave you. Say, you gotta drop this stuff. You can't play with this stuff. Yeah. Here you got a neighbor lives right in your subdivision, Uncle Bob, and they've done reached out to you two or three times. You don't know why they're coming over and asking you for a gallon of milk. Yeah. You don't know why they're coming over and uh, asking you, do you need anything? Do you need any help? And God might be prepared them, send them, they don't even know why they're doing it. Come over there just for you to say, well, sister or brother, have you, have you got a church you go to? Do you know the Lord? Would you like to have a Bible study with me Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it may be? What about, but you know what? You got this baggage on you, this weight, and it's besetting you, and you don't even realize. You say, I go to church every Sunday. There's more to being a Christian than going to church, saints of God. Uh, you, you, 
dude, this is the church. Yeah, I like coming here. But, but the people in here is what the church is. And if the church ain't operating under the ministry of the Lord, guess what? You ain't the church. Amen. Sorry. And when you got all these issues, I don't know her. She may be like that other hag that did me wrong. I don't know him. He may be like my daddy. My dad was a devil. Amen. Ain't it right, brother? Whole time, God's got him strategically placed there. But because you won't get rid of the weight that's so easily beset you, you can't reach nobody. You're sterile. Oh, man. Something, you know, it's amazing to me. This is a message that will deliver some people. But you know what, Brother Greg? They don't want to be delivered. They got a custom to toting it. I feel weird without it. I feel naked without my burden. <laughs> you can have mine. You have a lot more clothes for the winter. <laughs> Somebody say glory. You know, I don't mind. I'm, I'm tired of walking slumped over. That's right. Tired of being burned down. This weight in sin, it will be set. Here I am, I'm in a race that God's called champions. God's called athletes to run and run with fierce d deliverance and power and strength. And here I am carrying around a weight that should not be nowhere anytime near me. I've got a Savior that resurrected for my cause. He stood for me. He bled for me. He died. He took whippings for me. He took humiliations for me. And why am I enduring some of the same drama that he endured in his life? What's wrong with me? Ain't nothing wrong with this. Say, this works every time. Ain't something wrong with us. Us. We ain't been resurrected. Oh yeah, we went through the natural forms. Most of you have been baptized, I'm sure. We've come to the altar and said, God, I repent. But we ain't forgive the sister that abused us. We ain't forgive the man that abused us. We ain't forgive the daddy. We ain't forgive the mama. We ain't forgive this one and that one and this thing and that thing. We're steadily calling it down and holding it on our back. Oh, we feel a little relieved because our conscience is clean concerning ourselves. But ladies and gentlemen, if you ain't left the burden hanging right here, guess what? You still got a way that is still be saved you every day every day David began to say he says though I walk through the valley of the shadow I shall fear no evil why for thou art with me oh I could read it now my daddy wasn't I ain't know no about my mom either my brothers they wasn't too friendly to me either especially when I slayed Goliath cause they wouldn't oh, they ain't nobody real kind to me but I tell you I know one that sticketh closer than a brother somebody say glory that great Melchizedek king of kings and lord of lords he's with me when I'm asleep he's with me when I'm awake he's with me on the high places and the low places he don't talk about me run me down shoot birds at me he's real friendly kind and loving yeah he'll slap me when I need it but at the end he welcomes me right back home right into his family right into his table I'm feasting with him every day he's my friend above all friends oh boy help us amen he said now consider could you imagine Jesus the author and finisher could you imagine this for a minute let's talk about him Jesus was born for the church. Would you agree? Jesus was born of a virgin birth, just like the Old Testament said he would be. Jesus was beaten, just like the Bible says. Is that right? Jesus was completely, holy, soberly, and righteously vindicated from Genesis to the time of his crucifixion. Would you agree? All right, now could you imagine being born the most vindicated person person in history <laughs> I'm going now think about it could you imagine being born the most vindicated person in history the Old Testament speaks of you the gospels spoke of you not only that Lazarus after four days spoke of you Paul considered you the great high priest who was eternal could you imagine being this man made bread by God himself born from a virgin could you imagine being born that man for the church and your own church crucifies you 
the most vindicated person in history. <laughs> say, I can tell you I'm John the McKee. No, none of you know that. You say, you got license? I don't mean nothing. Most of you got fake ID saying you're 21. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That don't make me Jonathan. Ain't right? right. For all you know, I may not even be a McKinney. Uh -oh. Somebody say amen. Right. You never know. Skinny. I am skinny. <laughs> That's true enough. They say they started out this way, but they all seem to evolve. <laughs> amen. But you watch this. The most vindicated man in history, Uncle Bob, was Jesus Christ. There ain't no denying right. who he was. The church knew him. They read about him. They heard about him with their ears. Their forefathers passed the news down. Yeah, that's right. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? When it got time to trust him, they couldn't do it. Oh, my, my, my. Right. Yeah. And could you imagine me and Jesus? I was born for you. I went through the most gruesome mess you can imagine. He said he endured it. I can talk about it. You know, he said he endured it. So look here. It wasn't like a cakewalk. He was like, oh yeah, I did that. It wasn't nothing taking that beating. Cat nine tails. It wasn't nothing to that. Oh no, he endured it. Suffered through it. He bit the wood that was he was hanging over. It was teeth. I got his wood chippings in his teeth and in his mouth and in his tongue. He, he, he had to just grab a hold of something and scream with agony. Oh, I don't believe my Lord screamed. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be foolish this morning. This was a man just like you're a man. Oh, yeah, God give him some vigor above all vigor. But at the end of the day, he felt. Yes. He felt. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, he dug his teeth in that wood block he was strapped over and he screamed with everything inside of him, the agony of those that whip hitting his back and all because of a church that had trust issues and would not receive him. Today the cross is preached, ladies and gentlemen, and we should be dying. We should be getting at the foot of this cross every morning and worshiping, bowing down, rubbing our head against the floor. What is our problem? Have we been so abused by leadership and families and this and that? Why we don't no longer trust on him? Why can't we just take it like David and say, Lord, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. My preacher let me down, my evangelist let me down, my mama let my daddy, my wife, my husband, but you never leave me nor forsake me you'll be with me until the end that's what he thought about was his father up here not his father down here and that's what made him endure such great contradiction of sinners right. ladies and gentlemen you know what he done I'm here to tell you what he did when he was in that garden when he was praying now I'm telling you something saints you may have an ideology of who Jesus is and I may have an ideology of Jesus is, but I'm telling you what to me, he, to me he's real he just a real person in real sandals, eating real bread and fried chicken. Are you with me? Fish or whatever. And say to God, when he was in that garden crying before they come and uh, deny him, I can imagine he's weeping. I know what I'd be feeling. I said, my God, the only daddy I had that I could see in my natural, he's dead. Right. Talking about Joseph, he wasn't his natural daddy, but you get my point. My mama, she's getting old. Right. My disciples, Lord, they're just uneducated, goofy, unspiritual fishermen, but you chose them. So they'll be great one day. But right now, they can't help me in my predicament, Lord. The church, all oh, the church. He's weeping. All oh, the church. You would have to bring that up, Lord. God, I thought you said I was here to die for the church. That's how I interpreted, interpreted the scripture. Tony is a man now. I believe his flesh was talking to God. Somebody say amen. I don't believe the Lord come down on no gray thrones and oh, here I am, thy son, stand and let's talk. No, ladies and gentlemen, I believe just like you been down on your knees and you talk to God, that's the way Jesus did and I believe God heard him just like he hears you. He may not talk back to you. You say, well, I ain't never spoke to me. You ain't never cried either, have you? Till your sweat becomes great drops. Somebody say amen. And so he said, there's a Lord, but God, I thought I was to die for the church. Here I am. I know Judas is just right around the corner. See, he doesn't see an open vision. He's seen Judas coming around. He knew who the one was. The Bible says the only reason Jesus went that way, he said that scripture might be fulfilled. So the Lord had already seen that. 
He's sitting there waiting in the garden, crying. The disciples are asleep. They got a full belly, warm. Their demise isn't 24 hours around the corner. They got a life to live. Some. So Jesus, he's crying. He's weeping. He sees his end. Born of a virgin birth, criticized as a child. His mother called everything but a white lady. Somebody say amen. All the turmoil and the persecution and the, the abandonment, all the things that this man went through, and here he is, the very ones that he was born and raised for and just took a beating or about to take a beating for was the ones that screamed, give us Barabbas, we don't want him. Kicked out of his own house. <laughs> what? Yeah, I said kicked out of his own house. When Solomon found, built that temple under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, you know, Solomon was a son of David. Nope, David wasn't no father to him neither. But it didn't matter. He had that anointing. God said, you know what? I know you from that, that uh, adulterous relationship. He says, but you know what? You're going to build the temple. There was something different about him, wasn't there? Solomon, ladies and gentlemen, here he was. He built that great temple. He built the Lord of house. And here is Jesus, some thousand years later, 500 years, whatever it was. Here's Jesus, and a house has been prepared for him. And guess what? He gets kicked out of his own house. And I ain't talking about no wooded temple either. The church denies Jesus. The church had the same issues on that day, watching him, holding him, caressing him, rubbing on him, and saying, God, how mercy it is you. My God, my granddaddy Abraham talked about this. It's really you. Can I touch you again? But they had this. How many has got this? If Jesus walked in today, could you trust him to walk out? If Jesus walked in today, could you trust him to follow him out? Okay. If Jesus walked in today and said, I'm here. The great I am, King of kings and Lord of lords. And you had scripture to prove that he would come back. And he vindicated it by his word and by his manifestation. Would you follow him? Or is this besetting you and your race? Now, I could preach on something right here to prove that most of us were not following, but we're going to move on. We're going to close out. But this right here, Uncle Bob, it was on the church's back. And they had issues they couldn't get rid of you blaspheme God you're a blasphemer he said look if you knowed my father like you say you do you would know could you hear him could you hear him trying to get their attention man look you say you know Abraham and you don't see look I'm his son bless God right come on look I got the same last name don't you see the covenant written all over me? Come on. What's wrong with you? Why are you kicking me out? Why are you screaming Barabbas? He's a murderer, a rapist, the nastiest person in history, if you will. And here you are choosing him over the righteous king of kings. Come on. Come on. Consider him, in closing, who endured such contradiction of sinners. He says, who endured such hostility of sinners against himself? Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. You have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Have you considered him this morning? Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus in that garden cried and prayed to get victory over several things, I'm sure. But I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, he had to get victory over the church that was abandoning him as well. How do you know that, Brother McKinney? Oh, you should know it. What did he say on the cross? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Are you hearing me today, ladies and gentlemen? I'm here to tell you when he got to here, he still had this. 
Father, forgive them. He took this and he put it right there. It made it a lot lighter, saints, when he went to the Father to be glorified. Are you with me today? There would be no need to forgive a people if they had not committed a transgression. Amen. Whether it was against God or against him. I'm saying you divide the two. I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, God had to get victory. The Bible says he endured such contradiction. He endured this. He rose above the animosity and the grief and the pain and the harassment and the abuse of his mother and of his children and so on and so forth. He laid it on the cross and the Bible says they put him into a borrowed tomb. It had to be borrowed because that wasn't his residence. Somebody say glory to God. And three days, he ain't there. The tombs rolled back. He's free. You know why he's free, saints of God? Because he left it all right here. You know how there's proof that Jesus is the resurrected Savior? Because you don't find him at the grave. You know where we find most of the church this morning? I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about this grave. If you would wake up out of your sleep, out of your deep, dead shell of self-grief and pity and shame and just say, God resurrected for me that I could resurrect to vindicate him and I'll no longer live damaged goods. I won't be damaged goods, but I'll be a resurrected resurrected son or daughter of the most high God. I'm in this thing to win. How many is in it to win? Stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> he sat down on the right hand of God. He endured all. And he said, look. Paul said, look, man. There's a cloud of witnesses, they're compassed about you, and they're agging you on. And they're telling you, guess what? Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. I have what you need. You keep on searching. I've done all the work. But you keep on working. But you know what he says? But you're running on empty. How many's running on empty? How many's tired of that weight, that sin? He said, brother, you don't know what he did. Nope. And guess what? It don't matter. I'm here to tell you something. Listen to this real close. Don't let someone else's sin against you keep you from a resurrection. My daddy hurt me bad. My mama hurt me bad. My wife, my husband hurt me terrible, terrible, terrible. I'm carrying that around, carrying that around. Don't let someone's transgressions against you keep you from reaping what you was born to reap. Let it go. Drew, let it go. And say, Lord, here am I. I'm broken. I'm empty. Fill me with love, kindness, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. He says, against such, he says, there is no law. Feel me. What about that, little Joe? God's good. Amen. If your daddy would have had, if your daddy would have been Jesse, you know what? He'd have called you out there 